to welcome Professor Bronemark. Thank you for taking time out from your busy schedule. And I'll get right to it. How do you feel that your invention, Osseo Integration, what has it done for humanity? Well, it's uh, a major issue, of course, but basically I think that what we did when we showed that it is possible in principle to replace teeth or part of the face or whatever with uh, bone anchored prosthesis according to us integration since we do not understand how this can work i mean it's impossible to explain how i can put a piece of metal titanium into the human body then it's very important at least not to report so much success but failures and complications and try to avoid them. What is your favorite story? How, how one patient, what has he, he or she benefited from uh, osseo integration? Could you, could you give me an example of a very uh, a heartwarming story? You know, unfortunately, there are too many young women who uh, uh, early on get a tumor, malignant tumor in the face and you remove the teeth, you remove the, the jawbone, and you also remo remove part of the face. But if you take a young girl who, in, in, uh, in Brazil, for instance, who was the queen of the carnival and got the medio tumor, and then it was discussed, should one do a major procedure and move tissues from all over the, and so forth. No, when she got the, this prosthesis sitting safely and with very good technology, she is very happy. And, and to me, this means that we should always ask the patient. We should not consider firsthand how it's good for our progress in uh, the academic situation or profit for the companies and so forth, but we should ask the patient. I mean, instead of treating one patient out of 100, we treat 90 out of 100. So beyond science, there's a patient and a human being a living human being and and it's remarkable how we lose this aspect if we ha are not asking the patient mm. exactly because so ask the patient you actually come back to one of uh, the major points that beyond science yeah there's a patient oh there Where is a philosophy of our responsibility to mother nature or whoever is upstairs. Mm -hmm. And I believe that the, the priority to the individual doctor's uh, progress is not per perhaps why we are here. Mm -hmm. And I refer to Hippocrates who said, we do our very best and if we can improve quality of life a little bit for our fellow beings, at least not make it worse then we've achieved something. Um, if you are in the profession and consider starting uh, with implant treatments, what is necessary? What is uh, the fundamental things to remember and to consider? To study the basic information available over all these years and over millions of patients, but particularly to understand we cannot explain how it works. So there's only one way to make it safe for the patient, to try to understand the patient, to understand our, uh, one's own capabilities, and then ask colleagues. Mm. And it's always good to have someone to, to, to talk to and to, you know, you, you cannot standardize patients. Mm. Patients are different. The question is what should the ambition level be for each individual patient. And then, of course, the financial aspects come in there, and one should be very, very careful not to give priority to profit. The World Tour, in terms of educational uh, activities, what, what, what do you think is most important? Most important is to explain the priorities. And, of course, you should talk about new things, sophisticated things, like using computers to do surgery, mm. 
But if you consider there are 25 million people in, in Brazil who need reconstructions and in China 250 million, you must be realistic and you must say, how can we make this truly democratic, simple, safe, available? And that is why I believe that small meetings in conjunction with the major ones are very important and then communicate. You said something earlier that I um, felt was very nice to hear someone say. Uh, dentistry is medicine. Well, you know, I must immediately uh, attack you there saying that isn't this part of the body as important as the foot? Exactly. So therefore, I feel that it's necessary for technical reasons and other reasons that you have specialties, but it's also very important that you understand, respect, and do something about the fact that if you have problems here, either real problems or you fear that you will have a problem, tomorrow you'll wake up and you have lost your teeth or you have a tumor, whatever, then I think we should pay respect to the fact that personality is signified from this part of the body. And when you uh, think about uh, over these 50 years, I've seen so many patients who really didn't want major surgery. Boy, who does? But they say, if I could feel safe when I leave my home in the morning and look into the mirror at my, my personality, my face, and then I'm happy. And you know, this is the part of you that conveys whatever comes from your brain and you express that. And when you look at the fellows around you, you express something that you cannot do if you feel that you look nasty. The ab ability to smile. Yes, yes. Or show anger. Yeah, to communicate. To communicate, yeah. And therefore, when a patient meets a doctor, whether in medicine or dentistry, the first thing to do, according to Hippocrates, is that the doctor closes the door so they are alone and asks the patient, what is your problem? It may not be to have Hollywood teeth, no, but it might, may be that I feel insecure and I fe fear that I will look ugly. And, uh, you know, in when I did a lot of patients many years ago, I, I noticed that many married couples, the one with teeth, didn't know that the other one didn't have teeth. Because it's very personal. It is. And it, it's dignity, personal dignity. So what, if you ask me what we could do, or what we restore dignity, human dignity, to the patients, whether it's a couple of teeth or it's a major part of the face. Let me refer to the fact that each one in medicine or dentistry promises the Hippocratian oath. I shall do my very best for each individual patient, for the dignity of the patient. And I think that that is also something that these inter international meetings, big ones, can support, that we may not be able to make this uh, very exquisite technically, but we can at least support the dignity of our patients. Or fellow men. Or woman. Thank you, Professor Bruno. Thank you, my friend. Thank you.